But today was special because I was sitting, as I was standing there with Brother, Brother Chuck, I was looking at that printing press going and if you know my grandpa Carlos Demers, it was in his blood for printing. Yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't get a drop of that blood in my body because my dad never did printing when I was in the house. But I tell you what it was special. Amen. To see those gospel tracts being printed this yeah. morning in Luganda. Luganda yeah. is the language in the country where we're at in Uganda in the capital of Kampala that we use, Luganda. It just touched my heart this morning, Amen. I tell you what. Amen. Yeah. And then Brother Chuck said, I gotta go to the back and put another rule on. If anything happens, hit that red button. I said, Well, I'm running the press today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I went Facebook Live with it for a little while so they could see, and it just excites me. Yeah. 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 I tell you what, if you've had a part of this ministry at any point, I just Amen. want to say thank you. Amen. Yeah. The power of one gospel track in Amen. the one hand of somebody Amen. will change a life. Yes. Oh my, yes. And I remember as a kid, in the early 90s, I had to ask my dad for the correct story on the correct printout because I told this illustration before and it goes well with sermons. I mean, it really does. But it's so true. And I had to get the story from my dad real quick because he, uh, I thought I was telling it wrong, but I wasn't. I was telling it wrong, but on the wrong side. There was 300 people that I was saying was going to say, Preacher, my dad's nose said it was 500 people. Amen. Amen. And as my dad would pass out tracks, we get container fulls of fellowship track lead tracks, gospel, John and Romans, whole Bibles, New Testaments, we'd ship them over there and we'd take them out, soul one in, and as per Brother Burroughs says, they go to anyone that, the tracks go to anyone that needs them. Amen. My dad got a letter from a fellow missionary in Uganda <clears throat> who'd received a letter from a king in his village in southwestern Uganda. Someone had passed out a track and given it to them somehow down the road, and they got it into their hands, and this king was dying on his mat of AIDS in mm. his village. Penned a letter to ask someone to come and explain to him what this gospel oh, hey, was. Hey, hey, oh, oh, oh. You know, for missionaries, that's like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> I mean, you'll do what you've got to do to get to that person to tell him. I fully believe when you read through scripture that every portion, when someone gets saved, they're searching yes. for Christ. Oh, yeah. 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 And this king was searching for Christ. This chief was searching for Christ. My dad sent Sam, who is our assistant pastor, and he sent him to this village. It took him over seven hours to get from Kampala, the capital, down to Kabale, which is about on the border of Rwanda and Uganda. By the time he got to, to that town of Kambali, he had to go on another um, another vehicle ride up into the mountains as far as he could go, a sedan-type taxi that took him a couple hours. By the time he got to there, he got as far as that taxi to go. They said, here, jump on a motorcycle taxi, keep going up into the mountains. And about three hours later, he got to this pygmy tribe in this village. And they went in, and he started sharing the gospel with this chief laying on his mat. Huh dying of AIDS. As this chief heard the gospel presented, he said, my people have to hear this. Amen. Amen. They took Sam out to the courtyard and Sam began preaching to him, sharing the gospel how God loves them. Died on the cross for their sins, came to this earth just so that they could be saved. And Sam couldn't, you know, he was preaching through a translator. He couldn't just say one, two, three, repeat after me. He had to start in Genesis and go through the Old Testament and explain Christ and everything, how salvation works and how salvation is given. Amen. And as, this, as Sam gave the invitation for that time of preaching to that village, he said that he had to do a corporate invitation. There was no one else there that could give him the help and one-on-one -on -one salvation with him. As they prayed and asked God to come into their heart and be their Savior, Sam said, he said at the end, he said, now if you've gotten saved tonight, he said, would you raise your hand? Mm. He said, the whole village. Sam said, there, there's something must have gotten lost in translation here. There's no way a whole village gets saved at one time from one gospel track. So he said he went about it a little different way. Explained it again from another portion of scripture and said, now if you know you were to die today, without a shadow of a doubt, You'd be in heaven in the presence of God. He said, 
the whole bill. Hey, hey, man. Now, my dad, good man, you heard good this. Man. This is in the 90s before cell phones were in Uganda. It took Sam almost a week or so to get back. When Sam told my dad what happened, my dad was like, this is exciting to see the whole village getting saved. Now, preachers, in Uganda, it's not like this here in America, but in Uganda, when a person gets saved, <coughs> the next words out of their mouth is, will you come and start a church in my village? Yeah. My dad was excited. I think partially because it was a pygmy chief, and he thought, man, I've never gotten a picture next to a pygmy before. <laughs> this would be great for a prayer letter. <laughs> <laughs> As he made plans to go back up to that village, he sent Sam again. And they sent word up into that village to try to prearrange some things. And Sam went up there and was like, they're nowhere to be seen. He went to the local chairman council there in the area, the local government fellow, and said, what happened to him? And that fellow said it was either the rebels came across from Rwanda and Congo and totally annihilated them. Said they're either nomadic and they've moved on, or most likely they all died from AIDS. But because of the gospel, got to know one yeah. day. Amen. 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 Gospel Amen. track preacher, how much does it cost to print this thing? Uh, we can, uh, I think it's still a reader on a penny, John, for one track. Because someone Just gave three quarters of a penny, I think. Three quarters of a penny. Yeah, out the door, everything. When your kids in your Sunday school classes yeah. want to give to missions, Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. When, you're, when yes. your folks that are on a budget in your church want to give, let them give. Yes. Every Amen. quarter, three quarters of a penny counts right. to the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory. Good. It's amazing to see what will get done if we'll just send the gospel around yeah. the world. Oh, yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I've heard several wow. preachers preach it this week and illustrate it through Isaiah 55 11. That if we will proclaim God's word, yeah. the Bible says it will not return to right. right. but it will accomplish yes, just what he Amen. had intended yes. to Amen. do. Amen. It will get the gospel around here Amen. and around the world. Amen. Amen. Don't stop giving. Right. Don't stop supporting missionaries. Amen. Don't stop loving each other and supporting each other. Because we got to... 7.8, 7.9 billion souls left to reach Amen. before that trumpet sounds. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Amen. Thank you, Brother Demons. Wow. Praise the Lord. What a blessing.